Hi everybody, my name is Greg Anderson and today I want to talk about hard drive enclosures. Specifically, the kind of hard drive enclosure you would use to put an SSD into an enclosure and turn it into a USB 3 device. So, I did my homework, I did my research, and I'll cut to the chase for those of you who are kind of doing your research like I was a few weeks ago. And I decided that this StarTech hard drive slash SSD enclosure would be the thing that would best suit my purposes. Uh, basically what I wanted to be sure of was that the enclosure itself would not be the weak link uh, that would not allow the fast data speeds that I was expecting from an SSD. So this is the one I decided was uh, the best option for me and it turned out to be just what I wanted it to be. So let's talk a little bit about uh, SSD versus hard drives. So um, maybe you have a hard drive in your computer and if you were to open it up and look inside it would look somewhat like this. Okay, so that's what you got inside there, something like this. Now you can take this hard drive out and you can put it in a dock, something like, like this. So you just place it in there this way and all of a sudden you're able to access your data and right here it's got uh, two places, uh, plugs in a power supply and then the data cable. So all of a sudden it's uh, you know USB 3 external hard drive when you use a dock like this. Now in years past this was a good way to save a little bit of money. You could get a bunch of dockable hard drives like this without their own enclosures and just dock them in your dock like that. Uh, prices have changed a little bit and now you basically pay the same amount of money for the same amount of storage to just get one that's already self-contained with its own enclosure like one of these uh, MyBook drives from uh, Western Digital or WD. So again, this has its own power supply and USB cable and there's a hard drive inside of it that looks an awful lot like this one. So that's, that's one of the things that I rely on a lot now is external hard drives like this, self-contained that have their own power supply and their own enclosure. You see, I, I create a lot of big files for my video and audio work. So I rely on external hard drives to save all of that data. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me to be installing it onto the internal hard drive of my computer and then offloading it and putting it back on. I just like to keep all the big files in a drive like this. So used to be dockable drive was something that I found to be cost effective. Now I just get a bunch of these. Now the, or, or you could also, here, here's a nice one, you can get one of these portable drives like this. And so what's actually inside this one is a hard drive that's designed to be installed into a, a laptop computer. So it's just a smaller form factor hard drive. And this is a pretty good value. Uh, you can get, uh, well right now as I'm recording this in uh, mid 2018, you can get a four terabyte hard drive in this form factor for you know, under, under $30 per terabyte. So uh, you know, four, Four terabytes for under $120, maybe maybe under $110. And this one, because it's smaller, it doesn't uh, consume as much power, so the, the you don't need another power supply. It gets all of its power through the USB 3 cable. So what I wanted to come up with was something like this, with this basic form factor, with an SSD inside of it. So I found a good sale price on this SanDisk SSD at a local Best Buy store, but online, some of your favorite online retailers have the same price at the time. And that's just been a few weeks ago, but I need to tell you that here, here it is, I don't know, it's been about three or four months. Uh, this has all already dropped by about 20%, so the prices are getting better on these SSDs. Just in case you're not Sure, let me just remind you, okay, what's the difference between an SSD and a hard drive? Inside this hard drive, there's a spinning disc made with magnetic material. So it's like a metal disc inside, mechanical spinning disc. And then there's a little arm that kind of has a little uh, read and write head that just kind of scans uh, across that disc and reads where the data is or maybe writes new data 
across that disc. So this just kind of floats right above the, the spinning disc. And that's how you store all your data on a hard drive. So a lot of mechanical moving parts. Some people would say, well, there's a lot of potential for something to go wrong. And maybe that something will fail in the head or the spinning disk. So the advantage of an SSD is that it's more like a flash drive, a flash memory. There's, there aren't those mechanical moving parts inside, so it's more shock resistant, perhaps more durable. However, it costs a lot more per terabyte. Uh, the other big advantage of the SSD is the data transfer speeds are much faster. So, you know, we're talking easily four, maybe five times faster, depending on what your setup is. So you want to make sure that when you get uh, an enclosure for your SSD, that your enclosure is optimized for SSD type speeds, not hard drive speeds. You don't want to throttle the speed because, you know, you've got an enclosure that's really optimized for hard drives. So that's one of the reasons I sought out this uh, StarTech enclosure. You can, with this enclosure, you can put in a hard drive, one of the smaller form factor hard drives, just like what's actually inside this case, or you can put an SSD in here. And it's, it's very easy to do it. Now, different manufacturers uh, have different styles and, and basically what you're going to find is whenever it's an enclosure that has a metal case You're probably going to have to use a screwdriver to secure the The SSD inside of it and to and to put the case together if it's a plastic case It's probably just all snapped together and you can do it without using any tools This one I got just happened to be metal. Uh, the price was basically the same as their plastic version. In fact, it might have been like a dollar cheaper when I decided to buy it. So I got the metal one. Uh, no problem putting the, the drive inside the enclosure. They included the screws. In fact, they included a tiny screwdriver. So it was, even though the other ones, they brag about you don't need tools to do this. In this case, I, I needed a screwdriver, but it came with a screwdriver. So in essence, I didn't need anything that didn't come with it. It was a very easy thing to install. I took the, the, the kind of the bare drive. It had four places where I could screw, uh, put screws into it. So I used those four places to screw it onto kind of the, the little tray that's inside of the enclosure. So once it was secure on that little tray, I just slid it all inside the, the, the metal, you know, the metal exterior, put those two together and used two additional screws to, to secure that. Then all I did was plug in the USB 3 cable that came with it and basically ready to go. At this point, you can plug it into your computer and run the system software for formatting the drive because that's one of the things you have to do with a brand new drive, format it and it doesn't take long at all. And there you are, ready to go. This time I formatted it in the EXFAT format, which makes it uh, ultimately compatible with both Windows and Mac, and allows me to have my very large video files. If I had used the format of uh, like FAT32, for example, then it would be still compatible with both Windows and Mac, but there's a file size limit of like four gigabytes so you can't have any single file that's more than four gigabytes. And so with EXFAT, you get around that. And so that's what I did. And I'm happy to report that it's compatible with USB 3 and I occasionally pull out my old computer and do some things uh, with USB 2. So it's fully compatible with USB 2 as well on both Windows and Mac platforms. That was important to me. As I looked around, some of the hard drive slash SSD enclosures that I found were not fully compatible with uh, USB 2, or uh, they, they didn't necessarily al allow that much flexibility. So this is the one I wanted. And th again, the main thing was speed. So right now, as I'm recording this in mid 2018, for a one terabyte SSD, you could pay the same amount of money and you could get an eight terabyte uh, hard drive, external hard drive like this one. So why would you want to pay, you know, eight times the price essentially for the SSD when, you, when you're comparing the amount of storage? Again, it's all about the speed, the transfer speed. So once again, with what I'm, with what I'm doing with these, with these drives, uh, a lot of it is my video projects. 
when I have my large video files on there, I want the editing software to be able to access that data very quickly. So the editing software will, will run much smoother when it's accessing off of this SSD as opposed to accessing off of off of a hard drive with the with the slower transfer speeds. So that's a big advantage right there. So what I do is I balance my use of SSDs with hard drives. And what I do with my workflow, let's say, okay, I'm gonna finish recording this video right here. First thing I'm gonna do is copy the files from the cameras onto this SSD. And I'm also going to make backup copies onto hard drives like this. And I usually would back up to two hard drives. I, I like to, for every hard drive I have, external hard drive like this, I like to have a twin of that hard drive and uh, continually make sure that they're, they're carrying the same data so that if one fails, the other one you know, in, in all likelihood will, will have the data that I need and they won't fail at the same time. There are people who will tell you, you need more backup than what I'm doing, or they say, well, you should back up to the cloud, some sort of cloud service. And I, I understand that we could do a whole different video about backing up, but with the, the size of the files that I'm using, it's not really practical at this point to try to do a cloud-based backup system. But so far, so good with, um, like I said, I'll take the project files, I'll put them on here, and then I'll have the, the backup files on hard drives, okay? Then I will start the editing. And while I'm editing, I'm going to create uh, new files, project files, project command lines, those sorts of things, and also uh, rendered files, graphics, titles, whatever, whatever else I'm going to add to the project. It'll be on this SSD. And on a regular basis, maybe every day, maybe maybe not that often, but I'll, I'll come up with a, with a, a regular interval that makes sense to me. I will take the new files that are created with the project and I will make sure that those are backed up to hard drives as well. When the project is completely done, then I'll make sure that everything that is uh, related to that project that might be on an SSD is transferred to hard drives for backup and for archiving. Then, once I'm, once I'm satisfied that uh, my project is, is safe on uh, my, my hard drive and a backup hard drive, I can delete it from the SSD and recover that space for my next active project. So that's how I maximize my, uh, my investment into, into this technology. Active projects remain on the SSD where the fast data transfer speeds are important. And then when they're not active anymore, I make sure they're on hard drives. That way, I'm not spending a ton of money for stuff that's going into the archives, uh, you know, for, for my, my storage for archives. I'm doing something practical with hard drives. And also, since the hard drives aren't used all that often except when I'm backing up, these hard drives are probably going to have a very long lifespan. Uh, they're not going to be you know, constantly plugged in and used all day, every day, just only when I'm backing up. And then this is the active project here. So I hope that makes sense to you. Now, um, if you have one of these docs, it's not a bad thing to have because uh, this particular one has a slot here where you can put in a full-sized hard drive like this or a smaller slot where you can also plug in something like this SSD or a hard drive that's built for a laptop computer that's gonna have basically the same form factor. So that's not a bad thing to have. This one costs uh, less than $30. And um, if you've got, you know, for some reason, you know, your, your laptop has gone bad, but you want to continue to get the data off of that hard drive, use a dock like this, or, you know, just for whatever purpose, it's not bad to have a, a dock, especially since they're so affordable, USB 3. Um, I should also mention a couple more things. So SanDisk already sells an SSD um, with, a, with a cable on it that you don't need to have a separate enclosure for this. This is their little portable SSD that you know, anybody could buy. Why didn't I just get a bunch of these or why did I worry about making my own uh, little version of this with an enclosure? The reason is, uh, well, a couple of things. Right now, it's cheaper to do it this way than to buy one from SanDisk that's already built like this uh, when, you, when you talk about the price per terabyte. Also, I had, uh, I had like three or four of these and one of them, this little place where the, where the cable plugs into the drive itself, 
that got a little bit, the, the connection got a little squirrely. And so this one, I've put a little bit of tape on there to try and keep that uh, from, from going bad. But if you're plugging in, unplugging and plugging this cable in a lot, uh, or if you leave it plugged in like I usually do and you're just throwing it into a, into a computer case and, you know, there's just going to be some stress on that point right there. And I had one where it actually, it went bad. That connection got, got a little loose and so it was, un, it was an unreliable connection, which meant that sometimes I was right in the middle of something and the hard drive would disconnect and the little thing would pop up on my computer and say, uh, you know, your, your SSD, your drive has disconnected improperly. Please, you know, try to recover the data or, you know, so you just don't want that to happen. Luckily, I had all the data backed up elsewhere. So it wasn't a huge loss and it was under warranty and SanDisk was very good about taking care of me as a customer when I had one of their products that, that went bad on me. But uh, it made me just a little shy about getting more of these hard drives in this form factor, or I should say SSDs in this form factor. Sorry if I've, if I've misstated that a few times already. Um, so I wanted to try this other thing just also for the sake of, you know, if, if this enclosure ever goes bad, or this connection where the where the cable goes into it, if that somehow goes bad, then in theory, all I could have to do is uh, just get a new enclosure and I'm on my way, uh, less, less than $20 for this enclosure. Or I could take the drive out of the enclosure and use that dock that I just showed you and I could still recover the data there. So I kind of like that versatility that if anything goes wrong with the enclosure, the drive is okay, I just swap enclosures. Now, the last thing I want to tell you about is uh, let's talk some practical speed test results. So I used a Blackmagic speed test app to just test some read and write speeds on some of these USB devices that I had and, and some hard drives. And so I started out with this old USB 2 flash drive. And as you can see, um, <laughs> wasn't very good, just under 15 megabits, mega, megabytes per second, I believe that is. Megabits, megabytes, please, please don't be the internet, as they say, <laughs> and try to slam me if I got that wrong. I think it's megabytes per second. Uh, so here it is, uh, old USB 2 flash drive. The write speed, less than 15, and the read speed, a little bit faster, and that's typical, uh, but not much faster. This is slow USB 2 type speed. Next one was a USB 3 flash drive. So the write speed, still kind of slow on this one, but the read speed, much improved, over 100 on the read speed there. Uh, next, we went with uh, an external hard drive with its own, an in, own enclosure, and this was an older USB 2 uh, hard drive. So again, um, better than the flash drive, but we're still just over 30 on the write speed and a little bit faster on the read speed. Next, we went with, uh, this is a USB 3, uh, portable hard drive and it's well, it's not it's not that great it's only about 50 for the write speed and the read speed now i did a little bit better with um I'm, I'm going up in the in the rankings as they as they each got better this hard drive here in my dock uh, now we're up you know up in the range of 130 for the write and the read speeds on that one Next, I tried, uh, th this is kind of a shocking result. This is supposed to be a better hard drive because it has a faster rotational speed on the, uh, the, the disk inside of it. But uh, the speed results were, were a little bit less than they were on this one in the same dock. Now, uh, I know that the, the, the app I'm using for my speed test might not be the greatest thing and there are other variables as to how much data is on there and how it's accessing the data. So uh, these speeds are just kind of a good comparison, but I wouldn't say that this is the definitive test. So anyway, uh, with the dock, you know, I'm still getting not, not the greatest speeds in the world. Now I went with the next one. It was um, a drive similar to this one um, you know, ready-made with its own enclosure. And uh, so again, my speeds were somewhere in the neighborhood of 100. Next, I was getting comparable, if not just a little bit better speeds with, uh, with this guy here. Again, a little portable hard drive. I don't know why 
uh, this black one performs so much better than the white one, but, but it is a little bit different model. So there you go. And uh, next, I tried this computer here. It's not the most state-of-the-art, up-to-date Mac computer, but it works really well, and it has an SSD for its primary hard drive. So the speeds were much improved on the, the write speed, and the read speed was just uh, like through the roof. That's incredible. Okay, so this is why people love SSDs for their primary drive on a computer. You could take an old laptop computer that seems to be slow and not, not worth keeping anymore, and sometimes if all you do is swap out the internal hard drive with an SSD as the primary drive, suddenly you can bring all like a whole new life to that computer. Uh, booting up, which used to take you know a couple minutes, now takes just a few seconds. Maybe uh, this one here can boot up in about 10 or 15 seconds. And it's always been fast that way. Shutting down is also faster if you've got a, uh, an SSD instead of a hard drive inside your computer. The next test I did was, and this is the new SSD, the SanDisk SSD, inside this dock that I showed you earlier. So with that interface, well, it's still, it's a lot better than it was with hard drives, uh, you know, up around 250 for the read and write speeds, but not as good as it was when I finally put it inside here. Uh, just by comparison, as we're moving up, here's that one that SanDisk made that was, uh, you know, ready-made, little SSD with its own cable, and that's a great speed. Uh, 366 for the write speed, 402 for the read speed. That's great. That's, that's the reason I was attracted to these uh, SSDs in the first place when I bought one of these guys. But so far, the fastest speed I've achieved with, with all this experimenting I've done lately was, yes, here it is. It's this enclosure with the SanDisk SSD inside of it that came in this box. And there you go over 400 for the write speed and the read speed. That's the kind of performance I was hoping for. That's the kind of performance I got thanks to the StarTech enclosure that is holding this hard drive right now. And that's why I was excited to tell you about it. Again, the prices are getting better all the time. SSD is here to stay. I'm happy with it. And again, when I, when I balance the use of SSDs with hard drives for archiving, I think I'm getting Pretty good bang for my buck, and I hope this helps you to decide what you want to do as you're researching how you're going to manage all your big data files when you make videos that I'm going to watch on your YouTube channel. All right, I'll see you later.